Now, every single member of Congress I've spoken with says that they support NIH and they support more medical research. But medical research takes money, and Congress has done absolutely nothing to actually get more money into the agency. In fact, for over 10 years, Congress has been choking off vital funding for medical research and has reduced the buying power of the National Institutes of Health by nearly 25%. Now, all of you work in different parts of the American system of medical innovation. Can you tell me in just a few words how gutting NIH funding over the last decade has affected your sector? Mr. Borsi, could I start with you? Yeah, so our historical investment into NIH has been absolutely the basis of our life sciences ecosystem and all the innovation uh, that we have here in this country and is absolutely essential for the future. You know, the, the uh, diminishing of resources that we're facing now, I see them in two ways that it's affecting. One is going to be long term. So we're still seeing there's obviously great breakthroughs in, in science and medicine that have been happening from the investments that we've made over the past decades. And so those are still good right now, but those aren't going to be there in 10 or 20 years. So it's a long-term cost to one of the most dynamic sectors of our, of our economy and also that does so many things for patients. A second thing, which I'll admit in the short term, is, is beneficial, but is not good for the ecosystem in the long term. When I'm looking to hire people now, I am able to hire people that would have been getting, you know, would have been the new stars, the rising stars, the people that would be getting the junior faculty positions. I'm also able to hire people out of the more senior faculty positions. The best talent that used to be going into academia, I am now able to hire into the companies that we're creating. Again, this is good in the short term for the companies. It's not good in the long term because these people in the past would have gone on to amazing academic efforts, which would have spawned many, many companies, many, many innovations. And so you're seeing that as a direct effect. Thank you. I, this is very powerful, but I, I'm also going to have to ask you to be short if you can. Mr. Sullinger, could you just add something from your field? Yeah, from being on the academic side, it's been crippling, to, to be blunt. Um, I would echo several of the things that, that Colleagues are saying, and, and not only are we losing people to the, I mean, from the academic side to the private sector, like we're leaving them to other countries. Now we're having a loss of our best and brightest leaving the U.S. to go to Asia because they're investing more, and so it's been crippling, to be short. Thank you, Mr. Muslim. Could you add something? Uh, yes, I, I believe NIH funding is a critical element, and, and and it really is a great return on investment. That early investment in research answers some key questions that then causes the private sector, like us, to jump in and move products to to patients. And so there's a return on investment when you when you get that early research right and you answer some tough questions, then you encourage others to follow. Critical part of the pipeline, Mr. Kukul. In antibiotic development, which is a particular focus for us, we have a 30-year drought of new drugs, and we have some basic upstream science questions that really need to be answered that if we're going to jumpstart the, the pipeline. And they're questions that companies aren't in a position anymore to address. Yeah. Well, I, I want to thank all of you. You know, the House Republican budget and the Senate Republican budget were both released last week and both say that they support medical research funding. But what the Republican budgets actually do is lower the budget caps that are already crushing our research agencies, making it likely that agencies like NIH would see cuts, not increases, under these plans. Chairman Upton, who is leading the push in the House for FDA reform, says he cares about research, too, and says that the NIH needs more funding. But his draft bill, called 21st Century Cures, doesn't provide a single new dollar from Congress for NIH, not one dollar. Talk is cheap. But earlier this year, I introduced a proposal to try to fix this problem. The Medical Innovation Act would boost the NIH budget by about 20 percent, and it increase, and it achieves that increase without raising taxes, without gutting vital programs, and without adding to the deficit. More than 30 non-political doctor, patient, and scientific organizations like the American College of Surgeons, the National Women's Health Network, and the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute have supported it. There's no reason that every Republican, Democrat, and Independent in Congress shouldn't be able to support it. If people don't like this idea, 
then they should bring other solutions to the table. But let's be clear, it doesn't matter what Republicans say about supporting innovation if their budgets actually cut support for NIH. It doesn't matter that House Republicans put the word cure in the name of a bill if the bill doesn't put one new dollar from Congress into NIH to help fund those cures. Something needs to change. Families are losing loved ones to incurable and untreatable diseases while we do nothing. It is time for Congress to stop talking about increasing medical research funding and actually do something about it. People are counting on us. Thank, thank you, Mr. Th Chairman. Thank you, sir.